Howdy and hello folks, my name is Christian Sasser, but you can call me MH4, and as you can tell by the shelves behind me, I love collecting junk. Ever since I was but a wee lad, I've been collecting things. Over the course of my childhood, I collected everything from Thomas Trains, to Hexbug Nanos, to Beyblades, to Mighty Beans, to Attacks Ticks. But with every collection, there comes an item that's just out of reach, something that's so elusive it becomes legendary in your brain. Today, we're talking about holy grails in collecting. A holy grail is defined as an object or goal that is sought after for its great significance. Its presence in pop culture media like Indiana Jones or Monty Python has turned the mythological item into a catch-all euphemism for something a person greatly desires. There are a lot of ways that companies in the world of collectibles can try and artificially make an item a holy grail. With Funko Pop figures alone, there's stuff like store exclusives, convention exclusives, chase variants, alternate colored variants, and it's a bunch more I probably can't think of. A lot of times though, grails just end up being items that a lot of people are seeking after. Think of rookie cards for pro baseball players or beloved classic video games or limited productions of a unique product. And now that we've established what Holy Grails are, I need to explain to you two very important subsets of Holy Grails, an objective grail and a subjective grail. Objective grails are sought after for their monetary value or otherwise perceived worth. This may include items that were in limited print or hard to find. A great example of this lies in the gaming world with Earthbound. A loose cartridge already goes for a pancreas pilfering amount of cash, but a good condition complete in box cart with the instruction manual and all goes for much, much more. The better the condition an objective grail is, the higher price it can be valued at. On the other hand, subjective grails are grails that hold sentimental value to the person seeking it. Someone may seek out an original print Charizard, not because it's a valuable prized card, but because their parents gave them original Pokemon cards as a child. By this logic, practically anything can be a subjective grail, regardless of its objective value. Emotions, nostalgia, and let's be honest, brand recognition are enough to turn one man's trash into another man's treasure, artificially inflating the value of something in one person's mind enough to try and seek it out. Of course, there is a Venn diagram here. Going back to the Charizard example, it's possible that an objective grail could also be someone's subjective grail. The flexible definition of a subjective grail allows for the overlap to go as far on either end of the expensive spectrum as need be. Really, given enough time, scarcity, and nostalgia, anything can become a holy grail for collectors. It's all about supply and demand, where there's less supply but more demand, an item's value will skyrocket. This can also apply in a more subjective way to subjective grails. Your mental state and current feelings can dictate how you feel about an item's value. If you're in a huge Mario phase, then spending 50 bucks for that complete in box gold Mario amiibo might seem like a pretty sweet deal, but once you come down from that phase, that price might not look as good anymore. One thing that's interesting to note is that it's possible for a grail to become degrailified. That is, demand drops significantly, and thus the value of an item does as well. Maybe the item got reprinted, allowing more people to get their hands on it at retail price, forcing resellers of original prints to lower their prices. Maybe the item was based on a cultural fad that's already passed, and so people with mass quantities of this item now have a harder time selling it. Maybe more people have started selling their items, oversaturating the market and making them easy to find. The specific granular economics of supply and demand are for a YouTuber with much more niche and specific expertise than me, but just know that a multitude of influences can affect the perceived and objective value of an item. With all this being said, let's go into some grails that I personally want to find. While most of these are subjective grails, some of them can be a bit pricey. At the time of writing and recording this video, I have every Symbiote Studios Rivals of Ether plush except for one. Their Golden Edelis plush was only available around the time of a convention, I believe, and because of that limited availability, I was never able to get one. Thankfully, uh, I have the entire base cast, and it is a recolor of a, a plush that I already have, but Dang it, I'm, it sucks knowing I'm never gonna have the complete set, probably. Similar to Golden Edelis, the Fazbear Fanverse U2's figurines are things that I wasn't really interested in at the time that it came out. At the time, I wasn't really a FNAF fan and I wasn't really a U2's fan, but now that I'm a fan of both, I regret not getting them. Also similar to Golden Edelis, I have a complete set of every uh, Fanverse product that's released. I have it either coming in the mail or behind me. <laughs> And so it sucks knowing that unless I get a great deal on eBay, I may never have a truly complete set. And for the last thing I'm gonna mention, it's another set completing item, and it's another thing that's very hard to get a hold of 
It was the Splatoon 2 promotional wet floor CD given out at Tower Records in Japan. Back in 2017 when Splatoon 2 was coming out and they did the cross promotion with Tower Records, they had a CD with a few wet floor songs on it, including a uh, live performance of Incoming with like a uh, a different uh, band. This super unique CD is one that I really want to get my hands on very badly, but because of the CD's general obscurity and because of the regional differences, it's going to be very hard to get it at a comfortable price. Thankfully though, I do have quite a bit of uh, personal grails on hand that I was very fortunate to be in the right place at the right time to receive. First off, we got the ARMS comic as the world's only last living ARMS fan. I have to have this legally by law mandated. Before Dark Horse quietly shelved their ARMS comic adaptation, this was giving out for free comic book day in 2018. Guys, it's still coming in January 2019. This gives us a look at Springman's backstory and gives us the lore that there's more than one Springman. Uh, Springman that's in arms is the third, but you don't care about that. Uh, I was very lucky to get this on eBay at a great price. And you know, I'm very thankful to have this piece of arms history because that game is very important to me. Next is the Friday Night Funkin' Kickstarter vinyl. Uh, I'm a big fan of Friday Night Funkin' and I backed the Kickstarter, but I only backed it for the CD because I don't have a record player. However, in December of 2022, Needle Juice Records uh, announced they had about 600 extra copies of the Kickstarter variant. And I was like, shoot, I gotta get one. While they're still available at the time of writing and recording this, I am just very happy that I snagged one and that I jumped on it because uh, having a piece of this game's history, like like with ARMS, it's, it's having a piece of the, the history like physically with me, right? And uh, this is the game that introduced me to Newgrounds, which is a site I love. So, you know, any way I can celebrate this is awesome to me. And arguably the coolest one is my gold Mario Amiibo. Now this thing is special, not only because it's rare and hard to find, but because this is autographed by Charles Martinet, the uh, voice at the time of Mario. So we can see he wrote uh, on the side, he wrote uh, Super Christian number one. I don't know if it's gonna show up in the video. If it doesn't, I'm sorely sorry. Uh, on the top he wrote, woohoo! And on the bottom he signed it from Mario and Charles. And this thing is so, so awesome and special to me. I got to meet Mario, Mario, I got to meet Charles at a convention uh, in 2018 where he signed the Amiibo and uh, he was such a sweet man, so incredibly nice and meeting him was a pleasure. This Amiibo is incredibly just a sentimental Thing, but it holds a lot of value to me because it's a great memory going with my uh, mom and my grandmother to that convention and meeting a very uh, talented and kind individual who, you know, helped bring the childhood of millions to life. And, you know, that's hyperbolic, but it's true. And so having this is very special. All right, enough about me. I asked a few of my friends if they had any holy grails they wanted to talk about that they either want or that they've gotten. So here's what they had to say. What's up guys, it's Shelvin Game here. And as you can tell, I like collecting video games. I've been collecting for about 10 years. And Christian asked me to make a video on um, games that I want to add to my collection, like holy grails and games that I've already found that I consider holy grails. So let's start with games that I want to find. So really, we're going to do two. So first one, Godzilla on PS4. But yeah, that one's super hard. It's like one of the rarest PS4 games and runs like 300 bucks on eBay. I've seen it once and it was super overpriced. And the second game I want to find is Death Stranding's Collector's Edition. As you can tell here, I have the um, Steelbook Edition, but I don't have the collector's edition and I just love this game. I really want the collector's edition. It's not really that rare. It's only like 150 bucks, but if I could find it, my collection is gonna be so good. So I got five games here that I would consider holy grails for my collection. Not really, but like standouts in my opinion. But the first one, Silent Hill Shadow Memories on the Wii. It was also released on PS2, but I got the Wii version, played this, amazing game. Sealed copy of The Last of Us on PS3. Found it for like five bucks at a flea market, but love The Last of Us. Will never open this. Will stay in my collection forever. Gravity Rush on PS4. I love Gravity Rush on the Vita. I actually have it. Right here, but I am 
got the PS5 or the PS4 version and played it twice. I played it on that and on this and absolutely love that game. Sealed copy of Joe's Diner. Yeah, this one's kind of a joke within my friend group, but <laughs> it's kind of rare. It's really hard to find out even on eBay, but Joe's Diner. And lastly is Fortnite, the Save the World disc. It has the codes in it, but someone used the code sadly, but awesome. Probably like the standout of my collection is this. It's probably only worth like a hundred bucks, if that, but who wouldn't want to own a copy of Fortnite Save the World? But yep, that's five girls from my collection. Thank you, Christian, for having me on this part. Hey guys, it's Emmy from such games as Metroid Dread and I too collect dumb little trinkets that have no value. Specifically, Nintendo's favorite nope not even close. One of Nintendo's ways to siphon money from people like me, Amiibo. I have like 20 of these things but I always want more. I particularly hope that the Mega Yan Yoshi Amiibo suddenly appears at my doorstep one day. It's extremely rare because one, just look at it, it's awesome, and secondly, it was Toys R Us exclusive and as you might know that So the prices are way too high. Another one I've got my eye on is the Wolf Link Amiibo that came bundled with Twilight Princess HD on the Wii U. This guy summons a wolf pet in Breath of the Wild, which is a neat feature. Out of the rarest ones that I do have, I believe that Pokemon Trainer and Pichu are the rarest, or at least go for the most on resale. I got Pichu when I got my copy of Pokemon Platinum, and I got Pokemon Trainer from a collectibles shop. As for Amiibo with emotional attachment, this was my first Amiibo, and I got Pink Yarn Yossi when I met this Kuba. He's even the one who said I should buy it. In the end, holy grails for collectors really do mean a lot. Someone's prized possessions and what they're collecting can tell you a lot about who they are and what their interests are. And they provide a goal for collectors to try and reach, you know, something to aspire to. Let me know what holy grails you're looking for in the comments, and I hope you find them one day. Thank you sincerely for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Take care, and happy hunting!